So what is going on guys, NanoPaints93 here with another video and today is an exciting one. I'm going to compare the OG iPad Pro 12.9 inch, if you guys can kind of see that, I know the brightness is kind of crazy, versus the newest 12.9 inch 2018 iPad Pro. So when Apple first released the iPad Pro, people were kind of confused, right? They're like, what is this thing? Because this thing came out 2015, November 2015. And people were like, iPad is already just a bigger iPhone or a bigger iPod Touch. Why are they making one that's the size of a 13 inch you know, screen, right? Because at the time it was running, I don't even know, I think iOS 9. And that, again, that was just a giant iPad Touch or it was just a giant iPod Touch. So people were wondering like, what is the need for something like this, right? This thing is gigantic, it's clunky, it's awkward. I got a D-brand skin on it, that's why it looks like that. And then this little thing on the back is the pencil holster, which again, has a D-brand skin on it, if you guys can see, because the way Apple charged this thing was ridiculous, right? But now fast forward to end of 2019, this thing still runs the latest iPadOS software. As you guys can see, if I turn it sideways, you get the, the normal dock that you see on the newest version of the iPads and even the older ones, right? Down to the iPad Air 2, I believe. So my, my, what I wanna do in this video is kinda compare the two, see what you get, and see if this is still a viable option in late 2019 going into 2020. Like if you pick one of these up used, will it last you, you know, at least a year, right? That's the question. Will this get iPadOS 14 support? I don't know. I would assume so. Maybe like one more generation worth of updates, but I'm gonna break it down right now. I'm gonna show you guys what we're working with. So before we start getting into like the practicality of each one and real world use, I'm gonna jump into the specs of each one, how big they are, you know, how heavy they are, things like that, and like what to expect internally from these devices. So to start off again, this one came out in November 28, 2015, this one back in November of 2018, right? So this one's already running on a year. This one is four years plus. And if you guys go back to the beginning of this year, then you'll notice that I actually did all of my videos on my iPhone 10 and then, you know, used AirDrop to draw, AirDrop them onto this guy and edited it with LumaFusion on this iPad, right? And it worked, right? It, it exported 1080p, it rendered normally, but just to start off, so what we got, so this one's 713 grams all by itself, you know, not the pencil, no keyboard cover, and this one's about 643 grams, right? So this one's a little bit lighter, and this one's also a millimeter thinner. So I think this is 5.9 versus 6.9. So if I hold these up together, you can see that this one, although the same screen size, fits right inside of this guy, right? It's because the 12.9 iPad got about 25% smaller in terms of footprint, right? So, because they got rid of all these bezels. There's no bezel up top. There's no more home button anymore, as you guys can see, because you're rocking face ID. And from a thinness standpoint, I mean, they're both pretty thin devices, right? One is more of a angular design versus a, you know, curved design, but this one is technically a millimeter thicker versus this one. So back in 2015, Apple had this regular LCD IPS display and it still was not laminated, right? So if you look really closely, there's like a little divot and a little difference in where the screen, the actual screen and the top of the glass are versus the 2018 iPad, which is considered liquid retina. It's still an LCD display, right? It's not OLED, but it's liquid retina. It's one of the best. This is probably the best LCD display on the market. And it, there is no gap between the screen and the actual glass on the top of the iPad. So that's what gives you that nice fluidity. And it has pro, mo pro motion, so 120 hertz refresh rate versus, you know, just regular 60 hertz, which you guys can see. It's hard to display on screen, but you can see that these move slower than these. Again, they both are capable of running iPad OS. I just updated just to show you guys. If you go to the about section, bring this forward. We're on 13.2.3, let me bring this closer. 13.2.3, and the same should be the case on the regular iPad right here, or the 2019 iPad, 13.2.3. So when will Apple start supporting this from a software standpoint? Again, I'm not sure, and I'm not even gonna begin to guess, who knows, maybe come next month, they're gonna stop updating this guy. But highly doubt it, I think you'll get it to at least the end of this year. So ideally you'll still get support through the end of this year and then hopefully into iOS 14 or iPadOS 14. So internally you have the A9X chip versus the A12X Bionic chip. 
And if you geek bench them, right, this is where the iPad Pro in 2019, I guess, is, or 2018 is more future proof versus this guy, right? Like this, back in the day, it was made to be future proof and we're almost five years down the line and it still works amazingly. I mean, not, not amazingly, it doesn't come without its faults, but for the age, what you get is kind of amazing. So in the Geekbench 5 scores, you're looking at about 646 on the single core, 1200 on the multi-core, and then with the iPad Pro 2018, you're looking at about 1100 on the single core and 4600 on the multi-core, right? So this guy, you know, with Moore's Law, everything doubles every single year. So this is about four times as fast as this guy, which again, it, this came out in 2018, so it should that should be the case. But you would be surprised what you can do with this thing, right? Like I said, in real world scenario, I was editing LumaFusion videos in 1080p right off of this guy. And then just to run down the line with the last few specs, you know, you have Bluetooth 5.0 versus 4.0. You have Face ID versus Touch ID. You have, these both actually have four gigs of RAM. The only time you get six, gig, six gigs of RAM on this guy is if you go with the one terabyte version, and I only have the 256. Um, and these come in 32, 64, 128, and 256 variant. This one goes up to one terabyte. You have USB-C versus Lightning. So that's, that's a huge difference in terms of you know, what accessories you can use and how accessible different um, accessories are. And then here you have a seven, meg seven megapixel camera on the front versus 1.2, and then a 12 megapixel camera on the back versus a seven megapixel camera on the back. But again, I'm, all I'm doing maybe is FaceTiming and it, you know, the front camera does fine on both of these. This one's obviously a little bit more crisp, but this one still gets the job done and I never ever use a rear camera. And then another big difference is in terms of, you know, what accessories Apple made for these, right? So you have the Apple Pencil 1, which again, is one of the craziest and weirdest designs that Apple ever did. Like, I don't know who was okay with this, with this scenario, right? The way you charge it is you plug it in on the bottom and this is how you charge your Apple Pencil, which is crazy. So like if you're just charging it and you knock it over, then you're gonna break this thing right away. And that happened a lot of the time versus this guy where you just slap it on the side and it starts charging as you guys can see. So this, this way is a lot more intuitive. And then you have the smart folio cases, right? So you have this weird origami style case that only covers the front of the iPad and leaves it back naked. And that's why I put a D-brand skin on here. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't look that naked, but so this is what it looks like on. And it has this weird hump. And I will be honest, over time, this, the three pin connector hasn't you know, aged too well. Like this thing isn't really recognized too often. And again, you're stuck with one viewing angle, right? So, and then to fold it, it's this weird like contraption. You have to like fold it in and then fold it like that. So that's what you're dealing with. But I do like that it's microfiber. So you don't see any prints of the keyboard on here versus the new smart folio case, which gives you two viewing angles. It covers the back of it. So you got a little more protection. You just slap it on here. It's done with magnets fold it up and then you're good to go and it's a nice little package here and then again since the Apple pencils kind of loose on the first one I got this little like stick on little slider thing so you just put it on here and it's kind of stays on one place and it's not a bad package it still looks good that's the thing guys again if I put the pencil down you see there's like a little kind of like levels it up a little bit you just got to make sure to take it off or if you want to you know it does get a little bit annoying in that sense so in terms of the packages this one in terms of weight with the actual iPad keyboard case, this one's actually lighter than this one. I think by about 20 grams. Again, not a huge deal, but I just wanted to make that distinction. And that's what we're dealing with from a spec standpoint, right? And then again, the three pin connector is actually on the bottom down here versus on the back of the iPad on the new one. And you would think that there'd be more third-party accessories that take advantage of the three pin connector, but I still am yet to see a single one that actually does so. Like only Apple uses three, the three pin connector. But from a spec standpoint, that's what you're getting, right? So obviously this is a lot more modern. You get, you know, the USB-C, Bluetooth 5.0, you get the, the nice, the much nicer screen. But again, this one still does the job, you know, still gets the job done extremely well. And in terms of price, right? So this back in the day started at 600 for the 32 gigabyte model. This one started at a thousand for the 64 gigabyte model. Again, now, nowadays, these are a lot cheaper, even, only a year later and these I don't really sell them anymore you can get them certified refurbished from Amazon and I see them on eBay with the pencil for about 300 bucks and these brand new you can get for about 650 for the 11 inch and about 800 for the 12.9 inch so 
the prices are there and obviously this is gonna be a lot cheaper and it just depends. Do you want something that's gonna last you about four years or do you just want something to get you by for the next year while you wait for the newer one to come out? So this will get all your tasks done, right? This will get note taking, check, media consumption, check, uh, emailing, word processing. And like I said, if you keep it within the Apple ecosystem, let me know if you guys want a video on how I use you know, my iPhone and my iPad and avoid as many dongles as possible. And that's the way I edit. But if you just wanna use your iPhone to start a YouTube channel and you get an iPad to edit it, all you do is you record on your iPhone, airdrop it to this, and you can still edit and render and export with this guy, which is kind of amazing, right? And then same with this. this is, I do all of my work on here. 99% uh, of my you know, business work is done on here. All of my YouTube stuff is on, done on here. Great for media consumption. And if you're doing maybe super uh, intensive tasks, like having a bunch of 4K footage, different lines of 4K footage, or editing raw images, then maybe go this route. But I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't count this one out, guys. Like this is a great option. If you're okay with, you know, the dated design and having Touch ID versus Face ID and having the big bezels and things like that, then this is a big. Like you can get two of these with an Apple keyboard case and the pencil for the price of one of these without any accessories. So that's for you to decide, guys. Obviously, I'm gonna be biased. I love this thing. It's the most futuristic thing. And to this day, this is still the best tablet on the market a year to 13 months later, hands down. And this guy, honestly, I would take this over the Tab S6 or whatever Samsung has at this point, right? So those are the main differences between these two. And I just wanted to share this with you and let you know that this thing has held up great it's been my dad had it for about three years and i got it as a hand-me-down and then about five months ago i picked this one up and i still use this one my wife uses this one as you guys can see that's why there's a leopard print on there or whatever whatever that background is but she's totally up to date and she does you know she watches netflix youtube answers a couple emails uh takes notes with the pencil and then obviously i do all my work on this guy so so to recap guys this 2015 ipad pro it's still, you know, pretty relevant, I would say, right? Still runs iPad OS 13.2.3, the latest version. It'll probably get 13.3 when it comes out. And maybe they won't maybe they won't get 14, so you'll be stuck with 13. Point whatever the last one will be for a year. But I Apple was not releasing a new iPad Pro until third or fourth quarter of 2020, in my opinion. They might surprise us and release a new one. So if you guys really want to get into the iPad world, right? Like I would rather take a used iPad Pro 12.9 inch than the new, you know, cheap iPad that's like $249 and all this stuff because this is still more powerful than that iPad. And you can do a lot with this thing and you know, get a good experience on like the having a big iPad screen. And then when you do, when you are ready to move to the new iPad Pro, then maybe jump on that and then you'll be, it'll be like five years of technology that, that has moved forward. So it'll be like kind of worth the wait, right? But at the same time, this has been my favorite device of 2019 hands down right i do so much on this thing and it's never let me down it's never really restarted all these little glitches and stuff that people have been getting i've experienced almost next to none of them and this is the main reason why this channel exists let's be honest right so that's gonna do it for this video again hopefully this helps somebody out if they're deciding whether or not the og ipad is still worth it or it still even has good resale value like i said if you have an old one you can still sell it for like 250 300 maybe 350 if you have all of the accessories that go along with it. The only thing that I don't really like about the old one is USB-C, or it doesn't have USB-C. The Apple Pencil, the way you charge it is so dumb. And the Apple keyboard, it's even mushier than the new one. And again, it only has that one angle. Shout out to, shout out to Cheeto. So that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, peace guys.